Good afternoon all. Time to continue the build of my third octave spectrum analyzer using these op-amp bandpass filters and these little five LED bar graphs. So where did I get to? Well, I've wired up all the bar graph boards, the KA2284 boards, um, with a DuPont cable going to my five volt distribution. I haven't wired up all the um, analog filters yet. I've only got ground uh, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts going to these center three boards. So that's six bar graphs. But let's put power to this thing. Now what I've got here is um, a 2.1 millimeter socket. It's a nice one actually. It's a Sony one. I think it came off a pair of um, active speakers. But it goes to two plugs. Now that means that I can power both my contraption and also this, which is a PT2399 karaoke board. And I'm only going to be using this as a mic preamp. So we've got microphone sockets here. We've got a line level audio output going to a jack, 3.5 millimeter jack, and that will go into the audio input of my device. So here we go, 13.4 uh, volts we've got today. That goes into the little Sony uh, socket. And then one of the plugs powers up my device and we should see a little bit of activity on the bar graphs. Now I'm gonna use the other socket, or plug I suppose it is, to power up the karaoke board. And I've gotta be very careful here because I'm going to be creating a big ground loop because let's power this up it's got a little uh, red LED there ground or at least negative of my power supply I know because I've checked it is connected to ground the sort of outer connector of the audio connectors and similarly ground <laughs> similarly ground on my power supply at the back of my contraption is also routed through to the zero volt point of my audio input. So if I connect the audio output of the karaoke board to this device, I create a big ground loop which comes down the power supply wire through this unit, back through the uh, audio wire and back to the karaoke board. May be a problem, may not. Actually, I don't think it will be. Right, I've zoomed out a bit so you can see a little bit of what's going on here. Uh, here's the karaoke board, so let's bring this over here, that's powered up and running. Let's put that there, that's going to be the preamp for the microphone. And then this is the audio output from that, line level, so it's about one volt peak to peak. And I'm just going to take out this little connector for a moment. It's a really neat little thing, it's a 3.5 mil jack breakout board essentially. And I thought I'd use that, so let's plug that in there as the audio connector for my bandpass filter. So let's plug that back in there. So that now creates this uh, ground loop. But as I say, I don't think it's going to be a problem. In fact, it isn't a problem because we can't see anything on these bar graphs. I'm going to have to move this back to the left, aren't I? So that we can see all of the uh, PPM meters in shot. Now there's something else I want to point out on these bar graph uh, LED boards, there's a little link and all it does is short out a capacitor and that capacitor is on the input, the audio input. So with the link, it allows DC to come through and illuminate these LEDs. With the link taken off, DC is blocked by that electrolytic capacitor. So some of these boards have got the link on. Uh, in fact, most of them have. The only ones that have got the link off, I don't know why I turned them off, um, are these middle two. So these middle two have DC blocked, but all of the other boards have DC enabled. So if there was a problem with a ground loop or a DC level, you'd see um, some sort of noise getting through on the bottom LED or the bottom two LEDs of this contraption. The sun's come out now. It's one of those annoying days where one minute it's raining, the next minute it's sunny. Uh, so unfortunately I'm going to have to put the blind down so that I don't get problems with direct sunlight. We do want to be able to see these LEDs, don't we? Right, let's plug a microphone into the preamp. 
I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll turn the microphone on so that we get a nice glitch when I plug this in. Okay, let's go into one of these input sockets. And yes, you can see that um, the central LEDs, and I've only got wiring for plus and minus 12 volts um, and ground to these middle three boards. So we're only going to see six uh, VU meters, if you want to call them that initially. And now let's start talking into the microphone. And there we are. We've got a nice broad band um, from my voice covering those filters. Let's, let's just check the frequency of those filters. Right, well, filter seven, which is this one, is one kilohertz. That's this central one here. Then um, we're at about one point something, one point something, two kilohertz, because that's an octave. Remember, these are um, split by a third of an octave. So that's one kilohertz, that's two kilohertz, and down there somewhere is 500 hertz. Now, my voice seems to have a fairly broad spectrum across all these filters. What can I do with my voice? You're not going to enjoy this, are you? Um, to trigger some of these bar graphs, but not others. Let's give it a try. Right, I've wedged the front of this board up with a screwdriver so that you can see the bar graphs a little better. It's getting very bright out there. Just let me adjust the window blinds. What always happens this when I'm trying to do something scientific. The weather steps in and mucks it up. Right, let me try and produce some pure tones. So here we go. Um, the nearest thing I can do to a sine wave. And my voice breaks at that point, so I can't produce a continuous sine wave um, across these frequencies. So let's try the whistling. Now the trouble is I'm producing a combination of a whistle tone and noise. But I think you can see um, that I'm working my, my way across the frequency bands. And then the third thing I thought I'd try is producing a sort of filter effect with my mouth um, like this. Uh, let's try a lower frequency tone. So I think you can see there where I'm going, that sort of filter effect. It kind of moves up and down these bar graphs. But six bar graphs isn't enough, is it? Let's go to 12. Now, I'm sure you're saying at this point, Julian, we know you've got a scope with a frequency generator on it. And you can do sine waves of very precise frequencies, known frequencies, and therefore test this thing. But there's not a lot of point because the um, precise frequencies of these filters may actually change when I adjust the pot here. Oh, where's the uh, circuit diagram? Yes, here. So it's the pot at the front end here. Now, it looks to me like that sort of varies the potential divider effect of these two resistors, but it might have an effect on frequency. So I'm not too concerned because I haven't calibrated these things yet. I haven't set them up. I've read the setup procedure, but I can't quite remember what it is. Um, so I haven't done it. So there's not much point getting too excited. Now, is this thing going to get upset? Let's put the ground on first, actually. So daisy chain ground over to here, like so. Uh, oh, I haven't stripped back all these uh, pieces of cable. Let's do that first. Now, what's it going to do if I start adding power supplies uh, one at a time? So negative 12 volts there, but without putting positive 12 volts on uh, kind of at the same time. Let's hope I get this right. Does that uh, make it go funny? I don't think it will because I was doing this when I was building these units and they don't seem to mind having one power supply before the other kind of thing. But that should have pulsed that one into action. Oh, I don't know whether it has. Hello, hello, hello. No, we don't seem to. Oh, that's because there's no um, input. I haven't actually routed the daisy chain, the input. So let's do that. Uh, so that is, oh, that one is 
Now I've distributed the input signals uh, left channel to all the even units and right channel to all the odd units for the only reason that um, we've got two channel drivers on this karaoke board so it just distributes the loading a bit better rather than trying to get one of these op amp outputs to drive all 12 of these filters uh, one of these op amps only drives six of the filters I put all the lefts on one side of these boards and all the rights on the other if you get what I mean so let's put that on there now, is that going to work yeah oh yeah there's another one look there is another one so let's try putting the other one if I can see it without blocking the shot oh, I can't see it very well on to there oh, it's fiddly this is that another one do we have another channel yes we now have oh that's pretty much uh no just that last one to go let's do that one uh negative 12 volts to negative 12 volts that should power that one up uh oops positive 12 volts to positive 12 volts that should power that one up hello yeah these are higher frequencies so it may take more energy to trigger them maybe i don't know uh that channel to there and finally using my wires up nice and quickly that channel to there is that all of those up at the top end yes look at that s -s 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 -s. <laughs> yeah there we go the top one s -s 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 -s. responds to the sibilance and the others oh that's quite bright actually when they're all on now what about my um frequency sweep let's try it again oh that's working well let's do the low frequency ones now some of these connection points are underneath this uh, audio connector so that's going to have to come out just for a moment so I can get to uh, those connection points so I might as well fit all the remaining wires right I've got them all on um, something feels quite hot on the power supply <laughs> I suspect it might be the 5 volts so let's do some uh, low frequency sounds like hmm and you can see all the low frequency uh, PPMs on and now let's try some high frequency stuff something seems to be wrong with these two they're almost like the wrong way around yeah there's definitely something going on here i hope i haven't got those capacitors the wrong way around because that'd be a nightmare to uh fix but uh you see that 12th one comes on then the 10th and then the 11th that doesn't seem quite right right let's show some more I can't do very good sine waves in those middle frequencies. Let's try this. Yeah, tricky to get the very low frequency uh, sort of air rushing sounds. Let's try one of those frequency sweeps again. Yeah, all the low frequency uh, bar graphs are on the whole way through that. Yeah, 
but I can affect the um, levels of the higher frequency bar graphs. So yeah, we have um, 12 channels of um, speech analysis there, and these bar graphs are producing um, a sort of peak detect of the level of each of those 12 channels. Um, I can get low frequencies. And I can get high frequencies. Definitely something seems to be wrong with these two here. So I don't quite know what that is. I'll have to have a look at the capacitors on those two filters because there's something not quite right. Oh, I think I can see the problem. Um, you need higher value capacitors for the higher frequency channels and that channel 12 has got uh, 682s and channel 11 has got 472s. They're not right. Yeah, I've made a mistake because uh, channel 9 is 103, 822 for 10, then 472, and of course that should be 682, then it goes 682, and that should be 472. I need to swap a few capacitators, and that's going to be very hard. And then uh, 332 on channel 13. Oh, I've got that wrong. But uh, isn't it fun that you can actually tell I've got those two the wrong way around by going <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I think that's about it for the microphone testing. Uh, shame these channels are the wrong way around. Yeah, that <laughs> that's going to take some remedial work. Quite a lot of remedial work. Oh, well, never mind. Cheerio.